Greetings YouTube, Joe here with Colonization Media and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness. This is episode number 77 and in this episode uh, we're going to be purifying a crap ton of shadow Pokemon um, including, well, most of the Pokemon that we captured at the Cypher Key Lair. And because our purifying chamber was pretty much full and now they all need to be purified kind of all at once. First up, we have Beedrill, the bug and poison type Pokemon. It's the last evolution of Weedle, and it comes with Sludge Bomb already, which is awesome. Um, and it also comes with a uh, Baton Pass and the Poison Barb attached to it. So um, Beedrill isn't exactly a slouch as it normally would be, especially because of that Sludge Bomb, because otherwise you would have to teach it to it uh, via a TM. And you can't even get the TM until I think the end of Mount Battle, I, I want to say. Or it might not even be that, it might be the Orc Coliseum. Regardless, we have uh, Growlithe here as the next Shadow Pokemon. And it does come with Flamethrower already. And it also comes with the move Charm, which is a move that Growlithe doesn't normally learn. And it actually is pretty useful, especially if it already has the Intimidate ability. You get one lowering of attack. Uh, right off the bat, you know, automatically, and if you use Charm, they're already down uh, minus three attack that easily. All right, next on the list is Magneton, and it is a electric and steel type Pokemon, which is an interesting typing, although it does open up an extra weakness to fire and makes its um, ground weakness even worse, but it does come with Refresh, which is an unusual move for a Magneton to come with, um, and Rain Dance, which is very important because there's only one Rain Dance uh, TM possible to be found in this game, obviously through uh, the Battle CDs, um, but having Magneton Node already makes Thunder that much easier to use and that much more effective as well. Magneton also comes with the Steel uh, Power Up item called the Metal Coat. Alright, and now we have Pidgeotto here. It evolves at level 36, so it's kind of sort of almost there. It does come with Steel Wing already. It also has Wing Attack, Refresh, and Feather Dance. So it's a very balanced flying type Pokemon to add to your team if you're looking for one. Next up, Tangela. Tangela, however you want to say it. I always say that I'm going to say it one way and then it comes out the other way, so I don't care how you say it. Whatever, it's a pure grass type Pokemon, and I recommend against using it, even uh, despite it coming with uh, Solar Beam and Sunny Day, um, because I just don't feel like uh, its stats are good enough to hold up uh, against the stronger Pokemon in this game. So I will pass on Tangela, um, but it does come with a Miracle Seed, which increases the power of grass type moves, so you might want to uh, think about taking that off of that Tangela. And lastly, we have Butterfree here, the last evolution of Caterpie. It's from the Kanto region, and it reaches its final form at level 10, which is very, very quickly, but a lot of bug-type Pokemon do evolve quickly. It's a bug and flying-type Pokemon. It comes with Psychic already, which is awesome, especially because uh, Butterfree is uh, much better suited to using special attacks, and it also comes with Morning Sun, which is a move that Butterfree can't normally learn, and it will allow it to uh, recover some HP that way and recover even more HP in the sun. And right now what I'm doing is just kind of running around because there was one last Pokemon that needed to be purified. But it was like just barely not ready. So I'm just trying to get a couple of extra steps in here. There we go. Zangoose is ready to be purified. And I think that's going to clear out our uh, purifying chamber so we can get the next uh, seven Pokemon in there ready to go. Alright, so we have Zangoose here. Zangoose is a pure normal type and it relies very heavily on its very high physical uh, attack stat uh, and I believe it already comes with Brick Break and Crush Claw bleh, to uh, take full advantage of that. Crush Claw of course um, is a stab move and a very powerful stab move at that and it comes with Refresh as well it also has the ability immunity, so it can't be poisoned, so Refresh kind of, sort of, doesn't work on that. But it does work on the other status conditions. Okay, so now we have a bunch of Shadow Pokemon and a bunch of open slots as well. So let's get started placing these Pokemon in here. 
We'll put Weepin' Bell in the first slot and face it towards Baltoy. We'll put Arbok in set two, face it towards Seedot for the Poison Grass uh, advantage. Hypno's gonna go in set number three and face towards Gulpin for the Psychic Poison advantage there. And we'll do Primeape in set number four. Point him towards Carvana because fighting is good on uh, blah, 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 Dark. And we'll put Venomoth in the fifth slot, point it towards Hopip. And then what do we have left here? We've got Shelter. Uh, well, it's not going to go there because that's the normal set. And we'll place Shelter in uh, set number seven and face it towards Swinub. And what do we have left? Just Paris. And I don't have any other options, do I? Uh, it doesn't look as though I do. Okay, well, I guess Paris is out of luck. We'll put him in set number 8 and try to fill out the rest of that set and see what happens. We should have enough Pokemon to make another set here. Okay, so we'll take Butterfree and put him in there. Bug flying. We've got Ghost, so we would need a Psychic type. We'll put Lunatone in there because... Uh, Duskull's Ghost type is good on Lunatone, and then Lunatone's Rock type is good on Butterfree. But do I have something else that can round that out? I don't know if I do. Um, I would need a Dark type to round this out, because Butterfree would be super effective on the Dark type. But I don't have that available right now. I might need to get rid of Duskull altogether here. Now let's take Duskull out of there, because he's the problem one here. Okay, we'll put in Seal. Oh, Seal doesn't have the Ice type, which is kind of what we were going for here. But if I have a Grass type, that will round it out completely. There we go, we have Tangela. That'll do it. So we have Lunatone, Growlithe, Tangela, and Seal, and that will make a perfect 8th set for Paris. And I don't know if I have enough for a ninth set. If I do, I'll be all set for the rest of the game. That would be awesome. Uh, what do I have a couple of bug Pokemon, Poison, Ghost, uh, Nose Pass. Okay, so Nose Pass and the Wild can kind of sort of work on each other there. And uh, let's see. No, no party Pokemon. They're not going in there. Maybe I can take my Wild out of there. And we'll try Butterfree put Butterfree in there because Nosepass is rock type will be good on that and having a flying type is always good because flying is good on so many types and then also has um, a couple of good weaknesses too what I'm doing here is uh, taking the metal coat from uh, Magneton before I forget about it why do I not have room for it I have that many items sheesh Okay, what can I get rid of that I don't need? Alright, let's just throw this energy root out. I'm probably never going to use it anyway. Okay, now we can take the metal coat from Magneton and we'll get rid of that amulet coin. Well, not get rid of it, but put it back in my bag so that uh, Laron's iron tail can do some more damage with the metal coat. And we can get Vaporeon back. Yay! Give me back my Vaporeon. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that ninth set because it just doesn't appear as though it's going to work out yet. Once we get a few more Shadow Pokemon, we'll fill that up and uh, get it all ready to go. And then we'll be done uh, editing the Purifying Chamber for the game because that will be the last set. And before we head on out to Realgum Tower to uh, do the battle challenges there, let's just battle this guy because, you know, why not get some free money and experience. And he just has all normal types, I believe. Oh, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. He has Furret, Noctowl, and I think Ninjask and Shedinja this time around. So he's going to start off with Furret and Noctowl because those were his two original Pokemon. If you remember, he had Sentra and Hoot Hoot at the beginning of the game uh, when we first fought him. So this should be fairly easy here. We'll pull an Ice Beam on Noctowl and an Iron Tail on Furret. And we should have actually fought this guy quite a long time ago, as you can see, because uh, the levels of his Pokemon are like 28. So, and we're a full 10 plus levels higher than him. 
Uh, so this battle will be a breeze. Easy win, easy experience, easy money. Cannot say no to that. Okay, Ninjask is the replacement. And the only thing that is really dangerous about Ninjask is its speed boost ability, which will continually increase its speed after every turn uh, and continually make it faster. And then combined with uh, Swords Dance, it can be a fast sweeping machine uh, with crazy high attack and speed and you'll never be able to outspeed it even if you paralyze it. Um, it just is ridiculous. So I always aim to knock it out fairly quickly when it comes onto the field because it almost always will go for a sword dance on the first turn that it's out as it is doing here. And that just makes almost all of its moves more effective. Shedinja has the Wonder Guard ability of course. So you need to be careful with that. Uh, if you don't have a type that is super effective on this Shedinja, try to bring someone that knows Hail or Sandstorm or Future Sight. All those moves can knock out Shedinja, uh, even despite not being super effective, quote unquote. Ninjask is going to get an attack off there with Aerial Ace, but stupidly, as usual, the AI chooses to do it on Laron, which is resistant. And the Ice Beam finally connects there on Ninjask, and he's going to go down. Goodbye! And we'll get a little bit of experience, not a whole lot. And uh, that's going to do it for this battle. That's also going to do it for this episode, guys. In the next episode, we're going to head on over to Realgum Tower. And, the, and, blah, blah, blah. and in the next four episodes, we're going to be taking on uh, the battle challenges there one by one. Earning some money, earning some experience, and earning some awesome TMs. Thank you very much for watching, and please stay tuned for episode number 78.